Welcome back. In the last lecture, we talked about how Ada Lovelace and her friend Charles Babbitt figured out how you could use punch cards to enter numbers and programs and processes into a numerical calculator. Well, that was a great idea, but in the history of innovation, there's something important to understand, which is that great ideas are a dime a dozen. What you also need is somebody who can execute on those ideas, which brings us to Herman Hollerith, who was the first person really to use punch cards for a real working tabulating machine. Herman Hollerith was worked for the U.S. Census Bureau, and in the and he was appalled that the 1880 census took about eight years to count. They had to count all the returns manually, do it by hand, add them all up. And he figured there must be a better way. So he thought of the idea of using punch cards. The punch cards, as you see on the upper left, are the ones that were used in Jacquard's loom, that loom that used punch cards to figure out how to do patterns, how to weave the right beautiful patterns. That's the one that Ada Lovelace enjoyed seeing and helped apply to Babbage's analytical engine. But Hollerith also took the train and he, you look in the lower left, there's a you know, train ticket. And sometimes on the train, the conductor would punch little holes in a code in a way to uh, make sure that you know, they identified the passenger, gave him the ticket so the ticket couldn't be reused. And the uh, conductor might punch, you know, for somebody being uh, tall or male or redheaded or sort of guess their age and would use little punches in it so that uh, they could, you know, identify whose ticket it was. And that eventually leads, as you look to the bottom right, to the idea of a punch card being used in a computer. What Herman Hollerith did is whenever there was the data that came in, he would take up to 10 or 12 traits of, uh, that came in on the census data, such as age and uh, uh, male or female, and you know, different things that you would wanna count, married or unmarried. And they'd be punched into the cards and he made a machine, like that machine you see there. And what it had was mercury in the bottom and a sort of electrical battery thing up top. And so you'd put the card in and it would be able to notice because of the electrical current, which holes had been punched. And it meant that the 1890 census got done in record time. Now, Herman Hollerith's uh, invention ends up becoming a company. It eventually morphs in to international business machines, or as we call it today, IBM. Now, like Babbage, the machine that Hollerith used was digital. If you remember what digital means, it means it's digits, sort of yes, no, on, off, one, two, three, uh, things that are discrete units. The opposite of that is analog, where it sort of comes in uh, like a wave in which it's not discrete units. Now, computers, could have turned out to be analog. Here's an old analog computer, and it uses gears and pulleys. It's called analog because the length of the rope was an analogy for the uh, numbers that you were trying to use. And so people were trying to uh, invent analog computers, but for many reasons, digital beats analog by the time we get to the 20th century. Part, uh, there's Vannevar Bush. We're going to hear a lot more about him. He was an MIT professor who helped run the U.S. war efforts, uh, scientific efforts during the war, and then started Raytheon Computer. And you see, he's invented something that's sort of an analog computer, uses a lot of gears to show things. But the person who came up with the conceptual invention to make computers uh, that worked digitally was a guy named Claude Shannon. Absolutely fascinating guy. Among other things, he worked at Bell Labs and would ride up and down the long hallways in Bell Labs on a unicycle while juggling. He was very, very eccentric, but he was also very, very smart. There he is, the great Claude Shannon. And what he does is when he's working both uh, studying at MIT, but working in the summers, 
at Bell Labs, he looks at things that the phone system had. And the phone system creates circuits in order to route a telephone call. And back then, before transistors and microchips, they used switches. And if you see in the top of that picture, the switches were sort of electromagnetic. They'd clack on, off, on, off, sort of like an old fashioned switch you might have on the wall of your house. It goes click, click, back and forth, yes, no, on, off. And it can do it not very fast, but it'll go click, 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 click. And it's able to switch on and off in a circuit. What Claude Shannon figured out when he looked at these on off switches and circuits at Bell Labs was that those on off switches in a circuit could be applied to something called Boolean algebra. It was a type of mathematics that had been invented by George Boole in the uh, early 1800s. George Boole, born in 1815, same year Ada Lovelace was born. And what George Boole figured out was a way to use algebra-like notations in order to do logical sequences. In other words, if you wanted to say this and this will result in that, you'd have an AND gate. And you can see that, the second one down on the left. And there was a symbol. And he even was able to say, OK, A, B. Uh, and you could use it to do mathematical equations. You could. Uh, figure things out using his notation symbol uh, for logical sequences. It could do A but not B, it could do A and B, it could do A or B, it could do not A and B, all these things were the type of things that you had to do in a logical argument. In other words, you know, if the river is flowing high and the Bonacare spillway is open, then this will happen. That's a logical sequence. And those are the type of things that George Boole was able to annotate using Boolean algebra. So what does Claude Shannon do? He figures out, okay, you can do electrical circuits using on off switches, and they can replicate all of the processes that are involved in Boolean algebra. For example, look at the one on the left. It's a serial circuit. In order for the light bulbs to work in a serial circuit, both switches have to be on. Otherwise, it doesn't go in a circuit. So that's sort of like uh, a Boolean algebra equation that has and in it. This and this have to happen in order for a consequence to occur. If you look at the parallel circuit on the right, uh, the switch, either switch being on, will light up one of the light bulbs. They're in parallel. You don't have to figure all this out. It's not really that complicated. But you can see how Claude Shannon figured out that you could use switches to replicate the logical sequences that George Boole did in his algebra. And so, I mean, this guy's not even a doctoral student. He's just an undergraduate at the University of Michigan. But he gets to MIT where Vannevar Bush, the guy who was doing that analog computer is, and the guy is trying to get a master's degree, not even a doctorate. And he writes what is the most important master's thesis probably ever written. And it's called, uh, the, it's about the relay and switching circuits, about how you can do logic in them. And he wrote that it's possible to perform complex mathematical operations by means of relay circuits. Relay means just on off switches, basically. And it becomes the basic concept underlying all digital computers. And so there you have Claude Shannon in his ingenious way, working both at MIT and at Bell Lab coming up with the way that digital logic, yes, no, if this, then that, can be done by on-off switches in circuits. And in the end, whether it's the iPhone in your pocket or the computer you're watching this on, it's basically just a huge amount of circuits with on-off switches 
that then does logical sequences based on bits, which are binary digits. Yes, no, one, zero, on, off. All of that is at the heart of the digital revolution. Thanks.